And various people over the years had sort of suggested that, you know, would, be, would you be interested in recording some music? And I'd always said, oh, no, I couldn't possibly do that. That's, uh, that's far too overwhelming. And I, or, or, yes, I, maybe I will one day, but not now. I'm not ready. I'm not... Uh, no, that's not right. Uh, I'm, I'm not ready. Of course I can't, you know, I, I don't have the chops. You know, I'm 50 now, and then uh, a bloke from a record company comes up and says, do you want to do this? And I suddenly thought, well... No, that's not right either. Uh, I could get hit by a bus. And on that cheery note, my journey begins. A journey down the river into the heart of lightness. All my life I've been a traveling man. The end of this journey, the boy becomes the man. All my life You'll know what I mean when you see it. Been a traveling man. By the way, I should warn you, this film contains hats. We're now in Fredericksburg, Texas, where the local custom is to leave car keys in the ignition. Visitors are encouraged to just help themselves whenever they feel like it. So it's a Texan hospitality thing. And by the way, this is no ordinary car. This is a Ford Galaxy 500, a car I've loved since I first set eyes on one in the Goldhawk Road in 1978. It's particularly appropriate for my life-changing journey because the Galaxy came into existence the same year that I did, 1959. Although this is actually a later one, this is 1966, and the body shape did change a lot from, uh, from 1959, but then so did mine. So it seems fitting. 1959 was also the year that this song was recorded by this artist. And he is the reason we're here. No, there's... There actually isn't a tape machine, so... But it goes like this. Well, I'm going to Jolly. I want to see the body grow. That's what I'm doing, going to New Orleans. Ocean Way Studios, Chulari Project, take one. Good luck, everyone. One, two, three. I beg you, baby, most every night, please don't scold me. Just treat me right, and baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. I think it will do you good. That'll change an ocean and the deep blue sea. Be kind to your baby, there'll be a change in me. Baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. I think it will do you good. I knew that this was for me when I was very, very young. Um, I can remember the first blues song I heard on, on the radio and saying to my brother, what is that? I sort of knew it was like a, I'd always known it was there and I heard this thing and the hairs on the back of my neck went up and I said, what is this? And uh, a lover was born that has stayed with me ever since then. I was probably about uh, 10 or something like that. <laughs> Your thoughts. Yes, exactly. My thoughts. What are they at this point? Well, still fairly gelatinous. Just wandering, searching, hat-wearing, in the great musical city of Austin, Texas, where you might easily come across a sound like this in the middle of the afternoon. You got me running, you got me hiding. You got me running, hiding, hiding. Anywhere you want to let me know. Well, 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 well. This is Miss Lavelle White, a Jimmy Reed song also written in 1959. See how the signs are coming together? Even the hat is starting to make sense. I'm going up, I'm going down. I'm going up, down, wrong. Anywhere you want me, let me know. I said, tell me what you want. 
want me to do well. You got me doing what you want me to do, baby. So tell me what you want me to do. Miss Lavelle can also do this. As a harmonica player, I think I'd want to put a gun in my mouth at this point. Except you'd probably find Miss Lavelle can do an impression of a gun that would kill you quicker than a real one. So a splendid Texan T-bone steak, which I very nearly finished. I jump into my red open-top time machine and travel forwards to 1961. Unchain my heart Baby, let me be Unchain my heart Cause you don't care about me Sort of like a pillowcase She let my love go to win So on Set me free My guide and counselor um, My Obi-Wan in all of this is uh, Joe Henry Who is absolutely steeped in this uh, kind of music I'm sincere when I say I think people will be stunned, uh, not just at uh, how much time he's devoted to uh, his musical life, but um, how interesting his take on music is, and this, and this music in particular. All the different kinds of music that you know, jazz, blues, and rock and roll, and pop and folk and country, all those categories, really, when you come down to it, are nonsense. They're, they're just nonsense. They don't mean anything. All they mean is an easier way of cataloging music if you happen to run a record shop, which I suspect you don't. In fact, I more than suspect it. I know it. How? Well, since we shot this bit of the film, record shops have vanished like the morning dew. You know, better luck finding an apothecary these days. Where was I? Oh, yes. My point is that there are really only two categories of music that matter. There's good and there's bad. Everything else is just indexing. Same thing applies to films, books, curry, chicken love. This is a guitar picking circle in Lukenbach, Texas, and anyone can join in. All you need is a guitar and a hat. Willie Nelson made Lukenbach famous with his song of that name. The great thing is, no one minds who you are, where you're from, what you play. It could be anything. The important thing is you're playing. Yep. 
This would be an easy enough place to stay, that's for sure. But I'm on a journey down the river and have to make an early start in the morning. There's a life-changing event somewhere ahead, and it would be a shame to miss it. I didn't even really get that far. They, I now discover that you've only got to turn up and they give you grade one. Um, so even that small triumph was uh, dashed from my grasp. I remember working through these awful French lullabies in the grade one book, and on page 26 was Swanee River. That was the only one that interested, that hadn't had any sort of meaning for me at all. And we, we worked our way through the book, and she finally, we got to the day came when she turned over to page 26, and she read it out. And I'll never forget this. She said, um, Swanee River, Negro spiritual, slightly syncopated. I think we'll leave that. And uh, that was the day I gave up um, any form of classical music instruction, being here with, with proper musicians who can properly play. I wish I could go back to 10 years old and put in some hours on the scales, but um, this is like a sort of cathedral. It, it, it oozes from the walls. That's humbling, I must say. To walk down that corridor and see all those photographs is, uh, is a, it's a humbling thing. I'm sure they must have done a lot of uh, cornflake commercials here as well, so it's not all uh, high art, but there's certainly been a lot of high art here. Completely in awe of these people. Completely in awe. Apart from anything else, they're living the life that I sort of secretly uh, uh, wish that I I could have led. I find it just endlessly romantic and uh, and just a beautiful way to um, to live one's life. There is actually a great story uh, about Huddy Ledbetter, better known as Leadbelly. He wrote some truly wonderful songs, blues songs and also folk songs. He was as much a folk singer as anything. Uh, he was, the story goes that he was serving a life sentence for murder in Angola State Penitentiary in Louisiana. Uh, and when the governor of Louisiana, so the story goes, Heard Leadbelly's song, Good Night Irene. He said, that's it, we're gonna let you go. I just love this song so much, I'm gonna let you go. Last Saturday night we got married. My wife and I settled down. But now that we are parting, we take a stroll downtown. Irene, good night. Irene, good night. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. I'll see you in my dreams. There was a song. Professor Longhair did, called Tipitina. The first time I heard it, it was like the clouds parted and a ray of sunshine fell upon my childish face. Life was never quite the same again, and I doubt whether many days have gone by in the last, I suppose, 20 or 30 years when I haven't listened to a version of that song by somebody, either by Professor Longhair or by the many people who've covered it, or tried to play it myself, or sung it myself. Tina, tra la, wa la, mo la, da la, Tina. 
That song has been with me almost every day since I first heard it. And yet, I haven't got the faintest idea what it's about. Not a clue. She's long and tall, sleeps in the kitchen with the face in the hall. Hot tamales in the red hot, yeah, she got a for sale. Yeah, she got a for sale. Yeah, she got a for sale. I think acting and music differ in this one very important respect. That with music, I think it, you can say that there is as much pleasure, if not more, to be had from making music as there is in listening to music. That's generally not true of acting. In fact, pretty uniformly not true of acting. People don't, uh, for example, go and see a film that, uh, that they enjoy, then go home and start acting it out with their wife. Oh, I suppose there are some films you could do that with. Bad example. What I mean is, they don't go acting it out with their their employer, let's say, or a friend. Oh, hey, 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 let's do that scene. You know, uh, 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 I suddenly can't think of any films. I'm so in a sort of musical frame of mind, I can't think of any films. What's the name of a film? Nope, can't think of any. Nope. Where Eagles Dare, was that a film? that there are going to be some people who say that a middle-class, middle-aged, balding Englishman has got no business having anything to do with the blues. And I see, I understand that argument, but at the same time, I would say... I don't mean to say that it isn't a real argument. Of course it is. I just mean, what is one supposed to do about it? I wedged you the crossroads Fell down on my knees how do you force people into the chorales of music they're authorized to like? I went to the crossroads, fell down on my knees. Even if you could make all white children like Chopin and all black children like Robert Johnson, why would you? Said, Lord God of mercy, won't you save me if you please? Still, it is an argument. Necessarily so. It ain't necessarily so. The things that you like. All the music that I care about um, is all rooted uh, in, in African tradition. I mean, that's just where it comes from. An African American interpretation of, of that music is the you know, is the beginning fabric of, of, of all the clothes that we wear as musicians. New Orleans is the place where 
you know, this great amalgam happened of, of African tradition and Spanish and French music and, and white country music and, and then white gospel, you know, white interpretation of gospel music. You know, New Orleans is the place where that all got fused and, and every mutation that came after, you know, jazz and rhythm and blues and, and uh, country blues music, you know, you have to sort of uh, approach New Orleans. Uh, and it surprises me not at all that someone like you uh, would invest himself so heavily in, you know, in that city and the legacy of that music. That city having meant so much to me for so long, it's rather weird that I left it so late, but I realized that I was apprehensive about it. I was, uh, it, because it had a religious meaning for me, I was worried that I would somehow diminish its power if I actually saw it for real. I, I, I sort of resist the idea that just by going there, you're somehow getting extra points and, you know, extra cosmic lift because you've planted yourself there. I said, the Lord is my portion. I'm trying to wake up somebody here. The Lord is my portion. Do I need to work on that with somebody? If it's bread, he's bread. If it's water, he's water. If it's a doctor, he's a doctor. If it's a lawyer, he's a lawyer. If it's a friend, he's a friend. Whatever you need, God is. I have seen, as you have seen, dozens, hundreds of representations, fictional and real, uh, of uh, the Baptist service and uh, church music, but nothing quite prepares you for the extraordinary energy and feeling of joy. I, I mean, I was, it's absolutely intoxicating. I'm not a religious person, um, but I was about 20 minutes ago. I may be coming down with a little touch of rocking pneumonia, maybe even a dose of boogie-woogie flu. I can sort of feel it. Actually, what I can feel, what I... This could be my imagination, and it probably is, but I feel as if I can smell it. It smells of funk. I feel like this is a city that doesn't fear death. It's look death in the eye. Los Angeles, on the other hand, everyone's absolutely terrified. Terrified of getting old, terrified of... terrified of wrinkles, terrified of dying. I went down to St. James and Farm Rain. Saw my baby there. Death gives us the minor key. Birdie's Requiem, St. James and Farm Rain. Life is the major key and death is the minor key. So cold, so sweet, so sweet, so fair. Let her go, let her go, God bless her. Several of the songs are about death, and I don't know why, but that does appeal to me a lot. Why would that be? Hmm. Can 
who sets it. We are getting close to the life-changing moment. The mighty Alan Toussaint, godfather of New Orleans music, has agreed to unleash his horn dogs on my version of St. James Infirmary. And together we are going to perform in the French Quarter. We have to stop. We come to Brian Breeze Kale, Tracy Griffin, Clarence Johnson, and Big Sam Williams. It needs to have that little strut, you know. It needs to walk like that. Okay, one, two, three. I mean, for goodness sake, will you look at him move? Even that was too long. Two, three, four, one. The horns are really the heart and soul of New Orleans music. A little bit of Spanish, a little bit of French, some blues, sprinkled with a dash of jazz syncopation. It's the essence of the city. A lot of this music has been respected around the world. Sometimes it has not been as uh, the call of the day, like big million sellers. But uh, I'm glad to say that wherever we go and we play this music, uh, it's, high, it's well received around the world. Well, this is Euclid Records, and uh, my first impression is of pinkness. It's a temple. Can't really say there were many greater. Well, the first in the stack is the... Look at that. Isn't that amazing? We've already seen Alan Toussaint. Look at that. He actually doesn't look any different. Irma Thomas, the great Irma Thomas, soul queen of New Orleans. This is a great record. And again, what an album cover. McKinley Morganfield. He played in the creek and his family called him muddy because he was muddy. It's that simple. He didn't make himself popular, Jerry Roll Morton, because he kept claiming to have invented jazz, which is a, you know, that's a big claim to, to go making, isn't it? Everybody's standing on the shoulders of giants. But he's one of the giants on whose shoulders. In actual fact, we are doing two songs of his on the record. Um, Whining Boy and Whining Boy Blues and Buddy Bolden's Blues. Thought I heard Buddy Bolden say, You nasty, you dirty, take it away. You terrible, you awful, take it away. Thought I heard him say, I thought I heard Buddy Bolden shout. Open up that window and let the stinking air out. You will not find in this record shop or any other record shop Buddy Bolden. Uh, there is no surviving recording of Buddy Bolden which partly accounts for why he's become such a huge mythic figure, because it's a sort of an ideal career move, is just get a reputation for playing, but have no one around who ever actually heard you play. I, I, I want to ask one question, Please. and I won't ask it again in my life. Okay. <laughs> Has anyone here heard Buddy Bolden play? Yeah. What? What's going on here? No, is he, no is he messing with us? Because I'm too terrified to say anything. <laughs> I want to ask again in my life. <laughs> All the musicians whose music fills these shelves, in one way or another, owe something to this city. From here, the blues traveled up the Mississippi to the Delta, where Robert Johnson made his name, and on to Memphis, and then further north to the big industrial cities of Chicago and Detroit. The music mutated as it travels, became electrified, turned into many things. R&B, R&R, funk, soul, you know them all. But it all started here, on L'Ile d'Orléans, the island of Orleans.
Music fills the streets and clubs of New Orleans like nowhere else. A city that sings itself to sleep at night, sings itself up in the morning. Can't you hear me calling you? You're three times seven, baby. You know just what you gotta do. Well, Roberto, oh, Roberto, won't you tell me where you've been? When you got home this morning, you had a belly full of gems. Never known a place which has so massively exceeded my expectations. It is more than I ever hoped it could be, and I hope for quite a lot. I'll be honest. Uh, I used to dream of this city. This has been my Jerusalem. So here we are. I'm getting the band together for our first live gig. Alan and Irma are of course locals, but to crown it all, Tom Jones. I beg your pardon, Sir Tom Jones is coming down to drive the ladies wild. Way down upon the Swanee River. We're in the old National Bank of Louisiana, designed by Henry Latrobe, architect of the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. Also a Yorkshireman, That's I'm just saying. My heart is churning ever. That's where the old folks stay. It was a lovely surprise because I'd only ever known him as an actor. I was tipped off a little bit with Jules Holland, and Jules told me that he loves boogie woogie music and you know the blues, and so it was, I didn't know that before. I didn't know he actually played, but I didn't know he played so well. Piano playing, you know, he's, uh, he must have listened to a lot of blues players and a lot of boogie woogie players because he plays one song and he plays it like Jerry Lee Lewis. You know, he starts it off slow and then he goes into this boogie thing. And I, and I love Jerry Lee Lewis. I like all kinds of um, music, you know, and some entertainers, you know, oh, well, maybe my public wouldn't like it if I tried that, and maybe they wouldn't. You know, they, they sometimes they're very protective of themselves. Even though they like other things, sometimes they won't uh, venture into it. But I don't feel like that. If, if, if I like something, I, I want to do it. I told you, babe, most every night, please don't scold me, just treat me right. Baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. I think it would do you good. It would change an ocean and a deep blue sea. Be kind to your baby, there'll be a change in me. Baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. Baby, please make a change. I think it will do you good. Yeah. It's impossible not to walk into a room and, and, and not feel daunted. Uh, 
by the company. But at the same time, he's got a very particular job. You know, he occupies the center of the picture, and you know, he has to carry the weight in a way that no musician in the room has to. And you know, invariably, at the point when the musicians have found a song and learned how to put their finger on the thread of it, you know, Hugh has found the thread as well. So nobody's waited for him to catch up. You know, as experienced as everybody is in this room, you know, everybody's got to find it together in real time for this to work. She won't cook my dinner, won't wash my clothes, won't do nothing but walk the road. Baby, you don't know, you don't know my mind. When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep sort of resistance to treating any of this music as if it's as uh, as if it belongs in a museum I don't feel that sort of museum reverence for it but at the same time I just feel love for it can't help that it's not a it's not an intellectual thing I just uh, I'm, I'm opening the door to what I do and love when I'm um, not doing my acting sometimes I think my baby's too good to die Sometimes I think she should be buried alive, baby, you don't know. Obviously, feel so honoured to be to have played any part in in a single person discovering Professor Longhair or, or Dr. John or Henry Butler or James Booker or any of those people. If 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 just one teenager somewhere, wherever it might be, um, actually get discovers a, a whole area of music that they didn't know about before, that would be that would be an amazing thing. That would be an amazing thing, and I would take huge pride in that. Uh, it sounds very pompous, but I would find that a, a very great honour. John Henry had a little woman And the dress she wore was red She walked down the streets And she never looked back I'm going where John Henry felt dead. I'm going where John Henry felt dead. John Henry had another woman, and her name was Holly Ann. John Henry was taken sick. Supper soon. I got 99 miles to track the line. To lay yes, I would say there's still a New Orleans style of music, uh, in spite of some of the musicians who started it all, who dis are deceased now. But there's still quite a few of us around who are still carrying on the, the tradition. And yes, we still have our special flavor. <laughs> in the mountain. Until his hammer caught on fire The last words I heard That poor boy said Give me a cool drink of water before I die Give me a cool drink of water before I die Give me a 
before I die. Give me a cool drink of water before I die. I'm not one for the ballet, uh, doing it or watching it. Um, opera doesn't really, uh, you know, there are some splendid arias which I can be happy to l listen to, but I, I'm, I'm not a, uh, um, in, its, in its sort of uh, full form is not, not something that really speaks to me. Um, all kinds of other music don't really speak to me, but this, for whatever reason, has always just, uh, it, make, it makes me laugh and it makes me cry and it, uh, it, it sort of, um, how can I put it, fills me up. So, here we are. I have to pinch myself, seriously. I'm in the city of New Orleans doing a gig with Alan Toussaint and Irma Thomas and Tom Jones. And I'm playing Tivertina in New Orleans with Alan Toussaint and Irma Thomas and Tom Jones. We're the murder, we're the murder. What you gotta do journey is almost over. I am playing in the French Quarter with all these amazing musicians, and this may be about as good as it gets. In fact, this may be what heaven is like. I kind of think that this may be heaven. Maybe I was hit by a bus. <laughs> the only thing I'm missing now is the one big life-changing moment. But can't be long now, can it?
ready, ready now. Here it comes, here it comes. It, it, it's, it's coming right now. There you look. See? See that? Right there? That is Alan Toussaint giving me... giving me the fingers. It's the musical equivalent of a papal blessing. I am in rapture. I could die happy. <laughs>